Hello, this is actually one of the earliest X-ray photograph. It's actually the hand of the wife of the person who discovered X-ray. I don't think that guy loved his wife very much because he had no idea what X-ray was. That's why he called it X-ray. And yet he shown it through his wife's hand. Now, of course, we know what X-ray is. It's actually part of the EM radiation family with wavelength in the region of 10 to the power of negative 10 meters. Now, this is an important number. I want you to remember this. If instead of EM wave, we think of it as photons, then we're talking about photons which pack energy off of around 10 kilo electron volt. Now, remember visible light is just like around 2 electron volt. So X-ray photons are really big balls, yeah? Let's now talk about the components of an X-ray tube. First, there's an electron gun. We pass the currents through some filaments, raise it to very high temperature, and then it's going to emit electrons. So let's call them tube electrons, all right? Tube electrons. What do we use these tube electrons for? We smash them against the target matter. To make sure that the tube electrons bang the target matter really, really hard, we apply an accelerating voltage between the filament and the target matter. The accelerating voltage is a very high voltage, around 10 kV. That means by the time the electrons arrive at the target matter, they will be having Ke of around 10 kilo electron volt. So when they smash into the target matter, they smash it so hard that the matter actually emits X-ray. If you study the spectrum of the X-ray that's given off this way, you see typically something like this. So notice we are talking about wavelengths of around 10 to the power of negative 10 meters. So these are all X-rays. But I'm sure you can see two distinct components of this spectrum, right? There's this one here that looks like a continuous spectrum. This is called the Bramstrahlung X-ray. Bramstrahlung is a German word which means breaking. B-R-A-K-I-N-G. So this continuous spectrum is also called breaking radiation. So besides the breaking radiation, you also see very distinct sharp spikes here. Clearly these are discrete line spectrum, right? So the discrete spectrum part of the X-ray is called characteristic X-ray. And in fact, these lines are called characteristic lines. The reason why an X-ray spectrum has both a discrete component and a continuous component is because two different mechanisms of producing X-ray photons are taking place at the same time in the tungsten atom. So let me start by explaining the characteristic X-ray first, yeah? 